Malaysian people eat rice every day. Some of us eat rice three times a day. However, that does not mean we can only eat white rice. Rice can be cooked in so many different ways and it all tastes good. If you love the rice too, stay tuned. Life cycle of rice. This is contents. First introduction, second life cycle, third impact and lastly mitigation. Rice is a staple food for more than 50% of the world's population including regions of high population density. Rice is produced under both upland and lowland ecosystems with about 70% of the global rice produced from irrigated lowland rice systems. Rice was first cultivated in the valley of the Yangtze River. Ecologists have managed it of rice from where it was first domesticated in China. Rice crops are important in the global food economy and new techniques are being implemented for their effective management. Rice provides 35 to 60 percent of the dietary calories consumed by nearly more than 3 billion people. Rice is rising every year due to the high demand. With the 11th Malaysia Plan and National Agro Food Policy, Malaysia continues its proactive and progressive measures to promote trade and rice sector development. This is the types of rice. Have a seed type of rice, which is black, basmati, white, brown, red cargo, and arbosil. First process is germination. Shoots and roots start to emerge from the seeds. Absorb water and exposed to a temperature range 10 to 40 Celsius. And lastly, the shoot is the first to emerge from the seed with roots developing. There are three phases of rice first, vegetative, second, reproductive, and third, matured. First phase is vegetative. Developments of trees and more leaf and a gradual increase in plant height. The vegetative stage takes between 55 and 85 days. Seeds germinate into a seedling and an at tilling. Then, seedling grows and two more leaves develop. Leaf develop at the rate of one every three to four days. And lastly, the stem begins to lengthen legs about 52 days after sowing. Second phase is reproductive. The bulging of the leaf stem that consider the developing panicle called the boosting stage. Then, the tips of the developing panicle emerge from the stem and continue to grow. Flowering begins at the day after the heating has been completed and continue for about 7 days. Last phase is maturative. Starts at flowering and end when the rain is matured and ready harvested. Follows fertilization and can be subdivided into milky, dough, yellow, ripe, and maturity stage. The lines of ripening varies among varieties from about 15 to 40 days. Ripening is also affected by temperature, which range from about 30 days in the tropic to 65 days in cool temperature regions. Here are life cycle of product. First, raw material extraction. Second, manufacturing process. Third, distribution and transportation. Fourth, use of rice. And lastly, end of life. The only raw material needed for the commercial production of rice is the seedling. Additional use of herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizer can increase the likelihood of a larger yield. Here are the diagram of manufacturing process of rice, starting with planting, transplanting, drying, harvesting, and milling. This is diagram rice distribution, starting with rice producer and procedure, next to the rice miller, which is delivery to retailer and retail market at the end of this stage. Transportation of paddy also involved. This is the use of rice instead of we eat the rice. First, sharpen blunt blender blades. Second, DIY knife block. Third, a ripened fruit using rice. And lastly, rice water face cleanser. Lastly, end of life. Usually, rice will be food waste after human does not finish their meal and go to the trash. How the rice affect the environment? 
here, the impact is climate change. Nitrous oxide emissions from rice can contribute up to 99% of the total climate impact. Second, air pollution. A when combustion process, vehicle exhaust and processing factories around 10% greenhouse gases in 2019 are recorded. Next impact is land degradation. Paddy field is seen as soil erosion, breakdown of nutrient cycling, and the loss of soil fertility and structure. Lastly is water pollution. Poor waste water management. This is due to the chemical fertilizer that used will leach into the soil and contaminate the surrounding water sources. Last content is First is reducing carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide emissions from transportation and crop or fields. Second, water and fertilizer use efficiencies needs to be enhanced while ensuring yield, guarantee sustainable production and reduce diffuse pollution. Lastly, ministry and government agency should responsibility for exposing information and data about the environment in agriculture to the farmers at the village. Hey guys, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe this YouTube channel. Thank you!